Hey, it's Myers. Uh, I know the rule about if you're going to go see a band, don't wear that band's t-shirt. Uh, but is it okay to wear that band's t-shirt if you're doing a record review video for them on YouTube? Um, I haven't seen too many record review videos, so I don't know if that's a rule or not. But I'm wearing my D-Gen t-shirt today. Um, and we're going to be talking about... Nothing is anywhere by Degeneration. Uh, album come out a few years ago. Uh, it's their newest album, but uh, anyways, uh, yeah, we want to talk about the Nothing is Anywhere by Degeneration. Um, for me, my relationship with Degeneration uh, back in there was a period in the late '90s in in Sioux City, Iowa, where Every bay I fucking knew listen to Degeneration. I mean, I couldn't jump into, you know, uh, one of the Beacom's cars or uh, Dave's uh, vehicle or, you know, anybody's vehicle. We're going to run down to Little Chicago Deli to grab a sandwich or uh, run down to the liquor store, to, uh, you know, buy a Dirty 30 or whatever. And couldn't jump in somebody's car without hearing No Lunch by Degeneration. And I... I I'm probably wrong, but uh, I think No Lunch came out in 96, uh, you know, so I'm talking this period between like when that came out, I think it was in 96 to, you know, the early 2000s. I mean, every time I got in somebody's fucking car, uh, seriously, uh, all you heard was No Lunch by D-Generation because uh, we, we all fucking loved it. You know, it was just a masterpiece of an album. And, uh, so anyways, uh, that was the first time. And then, you know, uh, digging into their other stuff, you know, uh, got their first album and, uh, you know, just been a fan of D-Gen for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, so when I served with Sue Guitars, uh, you know, I, 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 I build pedals uh, and, uh, whatever like uh danny age from d gen had reached out to me and uh you know so uh you know we started working with danny on some effects and ricky and you know I, uh howie didn't need effects so much but you know uh got messaging with howie and you know uh great guys in the fucking band you know there, there was a time when danny uh flew out uh to Sioux C, come and hung out in the Sioux Guitars uh, showroom for a couple days, and uh, you know, like if I remember right, I I think I told Danny, uh, hey man, like I, I'm going to go to dinner with my wife. Do you want to come along? He's like, no man, can I just stay here and hang out? And I just locked him in the showroom, and uh, you know, he uh, just sat there. Uh, I told him, you know, twist every knob and uh, fiddle around with it. Like, you're not going to break anything, so uh, have fun. And he just, uh, there was, this is great. There was one fucking point. Danny's laying on the fucking floor by the uh, showroom. He had his knees up in the air and uh, his last paw on it, his uh, uh, chest, uh, whatever. And uh, he's strumming away and he's plugged into one of my amps and he's like, Man, this is great. Like this, this place is so amazing. This place, and uh, uh, I'm like, God, I hope so. I mean, how many other guitar shops have you laid on the floor at? And he kind of looked around and realized, you know, it, yeah, it is a guitar showroom or you know, an amplifier showroom, and uh, it, it kind of got sheepish about it. I'm like, don't worry about it. You know, I, I designed this place to be a player's lounge that. Uh, you know, I want you to be comfortable and have fun and whatever. And, uh, but yeah. And then eventually when I started the label, uh, Richard had, you know, an album, he, he said been a, a, in the can sitting for eight years and never put out. And, you know, he let me put that out, uh, you know, and which, I mean, he took a risk on me and I fucking appreciate it. You know, like, um, you know, uh, 
I, I had it at that point, hadn't put anything out yet, you know, and he trusted me to take care of a record that, you know, he'd been sitting out for eight years. And I, I really appreciate, you know, somebody believing in me like that. But anyways, record I want to talk about right now is nothing is anywhere. Um, I don't know, like, I could be wrong, but I think this originally just came out as a CD and digital download. And it was a couple years later that they end up pressing uh, the vinyl version of it. But, uh, and this is, I just realized actually a gatefold and I've, I don't, I've never been into it. Uh, you know, I've just, I slice the cello open and pull the record out. Uh, here without you know pulling the cello off of most of my records but you know this is a gatefold and i want to do you guys right by uh showing you all the packaging and whatever so uh you know uh, go ahead and pull the cellophane off here and don't worry i'll put in a poly sleeve to protect it after we get done doing this video but um how do you guys feel about uh, leaving your records in the poly or in the cellophane versus stripping them and putting them in uh, poly sleeves. I, uh, I I'm kind of torn, you know. Like a lot of times, you know, I, I just I leave the records in the cellophane. I know that can be dangerous because over the time, uh, certain types of cellophane have a tendency of shrinkage, which will end up warping your. Uh, Oh, okay, so like the the cellophane itself shrinks and, and binds up tight, uh, tighter and tighter and tighter on your cover, and it ends up warping your cover. Could possibly warp your record too. Um, I, I've seen that in like records that have never been like had the side cut. Uh, you know, a brand new record never played this sat on, on a record store shelf for years or whatever. Once you go and open it, because the cover's puckered and the cellophane's so fucking tight or whatever, you could have a warped record because of that. Um, you know, so do you guys leave it in the cello or do you guys strip the cello completely and strictly go with poly sleeves? Uh, leave uh, your answer in the comments. And uh, also, speaking of comments, uh, you know, if you like this channel, if you like these videos, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. But here's your front cover of Nothing Is Anywhere by Eat Generation. Um, here's the back cover. Great band photo. And uh, song titles down here at the bottom. Um, love this fucking picture. I mean, New York fucking skyline, you know, uh, across the river. Here's this fucking kid just pissing, in, you know. Um, and uh yeah i mean this is this picture encapsulates uh the whole thing that you know this record does but uh oh shit man never i've never had this open before like i said it's been in the cellophane but got a bunch of pictures of the one side and then we got lyrics over here printed uh it did a nice job with the packaging you know um but you know me i uh Unfortunately, never had it open, so uh, this is my first time seeing it. And just no inserts or anything, but paper sleeve here. Plain black vinyl. I think it looks great. Um, I think this is probably like 150 gram white vinyl, or not white vinyl, uh, god damn, I'm so used to saying white vinyl, 150 gram black vinyl, and uh, so anyways, uh, great looking record, great packaging, um, and the big question is, what does it sound like? Uh, you know, there's a lot of times when a band has a, a large gap in their uh, catalogs from uh, you know do a couple things you know 
a few years apart or whatever. And then, you know, there's kind of a hiatus or whatever. They're busy doing other stuff to, uh, you know, uh, where when they do finally get back to doing a record, the sound's completely changed. And uh, so that is not the case here with D-Gen. Uh, these guys sound exactly like they did in the fucking 90s. Um, you know, uh, sounds great. And so the song I'm going to play he you here is called Not Going Back. The song really touches me uh, on, you know, uh, a personal level. Uh, uh, you know, you'll hear in the chorus, uh, you'll hear in the song about what, what he's not going back to, why he's not going back. And, uh, you know, so... Yeah, I, I mean, like, I, I come from the Sioux punk rock scene, where in Sioux City, uh, you know, most everybody I knew came from a fucked up, broken home, dysfunctional family, whatever, and uh, nobody really talked about it, and, uh, you know, but there was just a lot of, a lot of shit that a lot of my friends had to deal with growing up, and, uh, you know, so... Uh, this song kind of touches on that, not going back. Um, you know, it, it's, it's first time I heard it, this record, you know, that was the song I picked up on. If not going back, it's just uh, this uh, killer song, uh, personal message, and I, uh, you know, love this fucking record. So, I don't know if these are still available. Um, I, I know the vinyl was kind of a limited uh, run deal. Um, if I could find a link for you to pick one up, I'll leave a link in the description of where you could find one of these. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, you can do digital download of this record or get a CD copy of it. But anyways, uh, nothing is anywhere uh, by degeneration. Uh, one of the greatest New York City fucking bands ever. Um, you know, I love Danny and Ricky, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I loved Howie. Uh, I, it's just the other day, it was like one year since Howie passed. Um, you know, uh, the guys in the band are just fucking amazing guys. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, if you like not going back, uh, Go ahead and order yourself a copy, and uh, if you like this channel, like and subscribe. Thanks. I was a kid, wide-eyed, dreaming of the city and smile. Staring out at the sky and passing through the old thinking life. My mother locked the door if I didn't get home before the morning light. But I never lost sight of the places in my mind. And I'm not going back, not going back. Back to choking from a broken heart. Dark and